On February 10th, my brother, my wife, and I visited the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show, the largest show of its kind in the world, with over 50,000 visitors attending over 47 shows throughout the city, including a number of fossil shows. Today, we're going to review the show and show you what we found. Each year, the show is given a theme. This year, it was crystals and crystal forms with exhibits such as this iridescent pyrite, a large metallic crystal of copper being caught between the rocks in what's called ripple fire, and the azurite coming from southern Arizona as examples of these crystals and their natural forms. There's also the University of Arizona Junior Show, with many visual aids to teach kids about geology and the sciences of the earth, including a section on paleontology, which even featured some fossilized shark teeth the kids could take home with them. And here you can see pyrite, fool's gold, and quartz. Pyrite and quartz naturally form these shapes, with the quartz forming hexagonal prisms and the pyrite forming cubic crystals, much like table salt. Additionally, you can see here some quartz with impurities in it, causing it to become smoky quartz, as it's commonly called. Amethyst is purple quartz, getting this color from a few iron impurities, irradiation, and a few other trace elements. Amethysts are often found in geodes, with some of them being quite small, such as these seen here, and others being even taller than I am. Despite looking like watermelons, these are actually rubies captured in the zoocyte, the green rock surrounding it. Because these are so cloudy and not clear, these would not be considered gemstone quality, and so are significantly less valuable than what you might see in rings. And now for people who wish Jurassic Park was accurate, we have amber. As things do get stuck in it, as you can see in many of the specimens they had here. There are a great number of crystals on the show, but our main focus on this channel is fossils, so let's start delving into those. Trilobites are very common at these shows, as they were quite prolific early in Earth's history, and as bottom feeders were more likely to be covered by sediments, protected from the elements, and then fossilized. Dinosaur teeth are also common, as dinosaurs only have one skeleton to preserve, but potentially thousands of teeth throughout their lifetime, as these teeth were replaced constantly. With enamel-like hours covering them, they're naturally better protected than bone, with some of the specimens preserving the original enamel that the animal had. Crinoids are echinoderms, often called feather stars today, and closely related to sea stars and sea urchins. They feed on small plankton drifting through the currents, and have been known to leave massive fossils, such as this one we found at the show. This turtle was $300,000. And this crocodile was half a million dollars. And the largest of the fish slabs seen here would have been a few thousand dollars. The fish slabs seen here are often more than other fossils that are similar. However, the fine preservation out of the Green River group and the preparation and cleaning of the fossil justifies the cost. Feminites are also very popular at these shows, as their hard shells preserve well and sometimes agatize, forming crystals inside their bodies. Sometimes you can find disassociated bones for sale, such as these, or some of the vertebrae we saw later in the show. These bones can still be identified, however, as they don't have more fossils found with them, it makes it much easier for collectors to purchase at a lower cost. Museum quality pieces like these turn up fairly often. For example, you could get a full scale model of Bambi Raptor, or if your budget's larger, a T Rex. You could even buy a model Tarbosaurus skull and pretend that you're Nicolas Cage. Only legally, you won't have to return this one to Mongolia, as it is just the cast. 
If you're more interested in mammals, they also had a short-faced bear cast and a woolly rhinoceros cast. They also had casts based off very famous paleo art, such as Leaping Laylaps by Charles R. Knight. While there were only a few complete dinosaur skeletons, you could buy some legs, such as this one coming from a sauropod. Lagerstadt fossils from Germany and other places were also popular, with well-preserved fossils being found in slabs, with everything from stingrays, fish such as the ones which were very expensive, smaller ones that were significantly less, this incredible reeds and fish piece, and the eurypterids, such as the one I purchased. As you saw, many of these were discounted, largely because vendors don't want to have to ship things back. So the end of the show is the time to go if you are interested in collecting. Just be aware of fakes and illegal fossils, which I will be covering how to identify these before the next show. Overall, the show was a lot of fun. Came up with a number of new fossils and crystals to redecorate the bookshelf with, as you may have seen at the beginning of the video, or if you follow me on Twitter at raptor underscore chatter. Also remember, save the planet, don't go extinct, take care.